Greetings everybody and welcome to another session. Um, today we are going to replicate this isometric object that we are looking at in orthographic projection and we are specifically going to use third angle projection. Now let's begin. I'm going to firstly draw the front view of this object. No, the front view have not been specified, but I am going to select this view as the front view. Now you can select if you're replicating this. Since the front view is not specified, I guess you can use any view of your liking for the front view. I'm choosing this view as the front view. So if you look at the dimensions of the drawing, you will realize that the overall length of the drawing is 64 plus the radius of the, the portion at the front with the curve. Now I'm going to ensure that I'm using the outline layer for this application. So um, 64 plus 16, that is 80 millimeters. And the thickness of that portion is 8 millimeters. Now, if you look at the height to the point where the object is curved, is 30 six millimeters and the radius of the curve the outer curve is 14 millimeters it simply means that the diameter is 28 millimeters and we know that the diameter is equivalent to the width of that portion that is going upwards since it flushes with the circle the semicircle that forms it the top so that's 28 millimeters. So this line will meet with this line and you will just trim. So this is 80 millimeters, this is 8 millimeters. And I've drawn a line upwards that is 36 millimeters. This line is going across is 28 millimeters, but this is what I should have done. This line I should have used, well, let me redraw this, 36. I should have used the center line to draw this line. It will serve as a center line. Um, so this is 28. And going across, it's 80 minus 28. So whatever measurement that we get for that, let's go back to the outline. You can simply draw it extended further and draw this to it and then trim it. Or you could have simply drawn and put the compass or the cursor rather here without clicking it, pulling it down so that it is in line with the measurement. Then click. So this is the shape that you need right here, as you can see. Then I'm going to select the circle command, put it in the center where I'm seeing the midpoint. If you're not seeing midpoint, at the O snap function, you right click and you'll see the options. Ensure that midpoint is selected. I'm going to put the circle here. You can either type the 14 or you can just click on the end right here. You are going to need to trim this portion. You're also going to need to redraw or draw another center line rather. Now you don't have to really ascribe a measurement to this. You have to type 28 on the list. Then remember the inner circle here. Selecting back my outline. The inner circle here. So selecting circle command in a circle here will be the diameter is 20. Note that the diameter is 20. 
but when drawing it's asking you AutoCAD is asking you to specify the radius so that is 10 millimeters and this is how the shape will look um, now to draw some hidden lines this is the portion of the shape that you'll see um, but there are some other details that you will need to draw so I'm going to select my hidden line the first thing that I would need to draw is this line here this is basically showing that there is a space between this portion and the other portion at the back now the inner line is a bit small let me see if I can if, if you're encountering this I suggest that you go in your layers go in your layer properties and change the type of hidden line that you are seeing you can load we have more than one types you can load hidden times two so that is that will be a bigger hidden line that meaning that the dashes will be a bit larger so let me see how that looks uh, so I'm selecting that it has been selected then it looks better um, another thing that you can do is change the scale here during this portion but when you do that you have to type region to regenerate the model and now everything is bigger Even the center line is bigger now if you want the center line to be smaller you can go back in your layers let me go back in the layers and you can go to center line manage load we're going to select a smaller center line now we can select center 0.5 this is half the size and you add then ensure that you select it and then and I look my center line is back to normal so this is what I'm working with the working line doesn't have to be white but I like when it is I am going to change the I'm going to change the thickness of the hidden line so let me go back to hidden line I'm going to use 25 as my line thickness or 0 0.25 millimeters that's not really showing much but all right so this continuing I am going to well I've already selected hidden line um, there are some details here that I'm going to reserve until I've drawn the plan view now um, let me go back to my zero layer or my construction layer as I'm going to transfer some measurements all the points on the join I'm going to pull upwards the points that I've seen so far um, this point all right so I am going to ensure that there's a 20 millimeter space between my drawing so this is what I'll do I'm going to put a line here, draw it 20 millimeters, then draw another line on top of that. We can now delete this one. So now that drawing this line is 20 millimeters from this. Now I'm going to proceed to draw the plan view. Now I'm going to first to select my outline. I'm going to select the line command, and right here, as you can see on the drawing, it was 64 right and then I'll draw the length at the back which I know that is 32 if you look at the drawing you realize it's 32 the, the curve at the end is 16 in the radius so you have to have 32 as the overall width now type the length again which is 64 and then 
I'm going to select my center line now. After I've selected my center line, I'm going to place it here. Then I'm going to draw another center line here and stop it about here. And I'm going to pull it all the way to the end. After which, I'm going to go back to my outline. And then I'm going to select the circle command and I'm going to draw a circle here. The circle is radius is 16 as you can see on the drawing. But this is the plan view of the drawing. I have some trimming to do. I also have this portion to draw. This portion is 8. Then I go all the way back. And from the top, I select the line command, click 8, pull down, type measurement. Then I'm going back this way. Right. Um, in continuing this drawing, you are going to now need to put in the hidden details. Um, I am going to click select my hidden detail line and I'm going to ensure. Oh, first of all, let me transfer these measurements first using my construction lines. After doing so, I'm going to now select my hidden detail line. Then I'm going to go back to put in these hidden details. This is showing that there's a circle, there's a hole in this portion. Then I'm going to go back to my outline. And if you notice, the the two circles, or two half circles that are forming, is that is forming the hole here. The radius is specified as being six. So I'm going to, and the distance between those circles, are, the distance is 24. So I'm going to offset this line, 24, type in 24, offset, 24. So I've selected, let me show you how I did that. So I've selected the offset command, type 24, enter, select this line, Put it in this direction. Note the distance between it is 24. I'm going to go to the circle command, click the center where I want the circle, then I'm going to type 6. Thing here. Command, click 6, enter. Then I'm going to con connect these points and these points. I have some trimming to do now. I'm going to select trim and press enter. So now you have the plan view. I think the plan view is completed. So now I'm going to complete the front view. I'm going to go to my construction layer to transfer this measurement and this measurement. Now I'm going to go back to my hidden detail line, comma, um, layer. Select line to pull down this. So it's showing that there's a hole in this portion. And this see the detail line is showing that there's a space behind this portion. Right, so I, I have two views. Now I need to draw the plan view. Sorry, the side view. And this side view or end view will be the right view right end view rather so i'm going to go back select my construction line because i'm going to draw a line from the uppermost point to the upper right most point so this is this point is crucial this is the point that we're going to use to transfer the measurements from the plan view to the side view now i'm going to ensure that i'm setting my angle to 45 degrees i'm going to continue to use my oh um, construction line 45 after which I am going to transfer some measurements from all the points possible so this is one point all right let me do this first let me bring across this line this is the lowest point so on this front view so these lines going across will go all the way down so once it took the 45 degree line, they're going down. 
So let me carve out the main shape first. All right, so bring this across. Let's get it stop here. Um, this will stop here. This will stop here. Uh, this can go all the way across. So let me go to outline to show you what's happening. So I'm going to just click on line, carve out the shape. All right. I think this line what I should have done here. Let me delete this line. And when we join, I should have done this. So this is the shape here. So let me transfer some more measurements. I'm doing it piece by piece so you're not confused. This should go all the way here. This should go all the way here. And then I am going to my hidden detail layer. I'm going to draw lines here, lines here. It's here. When the zoom in, the entry of the clicking in at the correct point. Then I have one set of lines to transfer now. The last set, I think. Then I'm going to put these here, to here, here. You have to zoom in so that you don't click the wrong point. You should click on where it's forming the intersection, the X, not the midpoint. And once I've done this, I'll go back to my hidden line there to indicate where the hole would be. So there's a hole in the object here. Now, I need to dimension this. I'll show you the measurements. Uh, before doing that, I'm going to select my center line to draw a line through the center here. You can extend it by words. You could have also placed one through here and through here. Okay, now. This is showing that this is a hole here, and it's a cylindrical hole or a circular hole. Now, you can, if you wish, for the time being, turn off the zero layer. Now, it's time to use your dimension layer. So let's go to dimensions. Um, if you notice initially, just due to the fact that you have set up a new page, your dimension layers will be your dimension be small so if you notice I've made I've put the overall length of this drawing here and if you notice it will be very small so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to go in dim style dim style enter so I'm going to go to modify once you go to modify you are going to ensure that the, that the text height for one is, is changed. Let me put four and see what will happen. Let me close, OK this, close this. Uh, four is a bit uh, large. You can also search for this icon when you're doing dim style. If you, if you don't see the icon, just type D I M S D Y L E. It, it, that version where that icon is will depend on the, the version of AutoCAD that you're using, whether, whether it be a Mac or a Windows version or the year. Okay, so I'm going to use 2.5 to see what how that would look. Um, I'm also going to change some other things. My arrow size, I'll change that to about 2. Um, the lines of far the object is from the dimension is of the object the dimension line 
select two to see what that does. Primary units, precision, zero. It's already on decimal, which is good. Um, the text, we have to ensure that it's aligning with the dimension line and that the text is, yeah, let me, let me see what this does. Okay, close. Now well, this is looking more like it. Now, I am going to put dimensions on some of some portions here like for example I'm going to show this measurement you can show what you wish you can you could have also shown here instead if you show if you if you place this measurement you would also have to put this person you're just putting the essential measurements now this measurement here if you want this to be in line with this, instead of just clicking anywhere randomly, you can just click over this side and you now it is in line. Now, let me show some measurements here. I'm going to click, in, I'm going to click here, same thing applies. Let me just click on this dimension line to ensure that they are in line. Just to let, just to add some neatness to your work. Now, if if you're using the Windows version, you can go to annotate up at the top here and you can search for this um, command. It's called dim continue or you could type it. <laughs> um, and this is what it does. It continues the dimension. If you have a number of dimensioning to do on a single in a single line, you can do that. Now, um, let me see what else I could dimension. Now we can click on the click and hold on the dimension command to select other dimensions like angular dimension or the radius dimension so I'm going to select the radius dimension to show this dimension um, I want to also click on it again to show this dimension click on it again I, you can just press enter to reactivate the last command that you used or space so yes, let me go to the diameter window. So I'm holding the mouse on the command until the drop down menu comes and I'm changing it to diameter. This one, let me see. It's up to you whether you want to show the diameter or the radius. For complete circles, I like to show the diameter. For, for arcs, I like to show the radius. Hence, this, this, and this, I'm showing the radius. Now, um, I'm going to go back to linear dimension then I'm going to click it I need to show this um, the space in between 24 uh, let me see what else I would need over this side I can show total length or height rather of this object no I'm showing the 8 here I don't need to show it here again um, I don't need to show these measurements I don't need to show any because a lot of the measurements um, a lot of them are being captured over this side um, if you want you, you could show this measurement but it is really not necessary um, what, I, what I can do here is to show this. If you realize that the measurement is not showing, is not being shown over the dimension line, you can pull it over it. All right. Um, you don't really have to do this. If you want, it's up to you or where you want to show dimensions. And that's it for the dimensioning portion. Let me again see if I'm missing anything. Let me just put this measurement here. Right. Um, so that's it basically for the dimensioning of this drawing. I don't think we're um, missing any dimension. Um, let's continue to label the drawing now. I'm going to click on text a text or m text you can type m text and press enter 
When you do that, it's asking to specify the first corner where you want the text. I'm going to click here. That's what I'm going to leave in the front view. It's asking for the second corner, the opposite corner. But I don't want to do that as yet. I'm going to press H, Enter, to specify the height. Now the height can be, let me use 5. Then I press Enter. Now I'm going to specify the opposite corner. I'm going to type plan. Ensure that I use a dimension line to do this. I should have called that layer dimensioning and labeling. Alright, so I'm, I want to put this more central here. So what you can do now is to copy this. Click copy, select the object you want to copy, press enter. Click a base point, put it across. We um, can put this here. So this is the plan view. You double click on the object. Do the word to cheat to retype. This is the front. This is the end. And as we know for orthographic projection, we have to show our projection symbol. So I am going to go ahead and draw the projection symbol. This is actually done in third angle projection, and as such, I'm going to draw the projection symbol. One of the first things that we want to draw is the the angle sorry not not the angle let me go back to outline the circle um i'm going to put the projection symbol somewhere here i'm going to click i'm going to use a radius of 10 and whatever the radius of the outside circle is the inner circle must be half let me use my center line. I should have done this first, but anyways, I can put it in after. Ensure that the center option is on. So I'm going to find the center, click, and draw a line like this. You can use the extend command to extend it. It works like trim, or you can just pull it up, pull the line up. So once you have this, I'm going to go back to outline. Click on the center, type 5. Then I'm going to extend this line. I'm going to extend this. Yes, the continuous length. I might have to pull it back. Depends. Um, this is what I'm going to do next. But, um, let's see. I'm going to use 25. I'm going to make sure that I have a line here. Basically, we want a line right here that is 25 from here. So this is our normal date. You can let me turn this back. Let me use the construction line. To draw a line that is 10, and draw another line here going down that is 20. Then this line I'm going to offset 25. After offsetting it, setting it 25, I'm going to offset it again, but this time I'm offsetting it 20. Right? So this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to transfer some measurements. Transfer this across, transfer this across. Then I'm going to go to the outline command to draw this object. Notice what I'm doing, I'm connecting this point to this point. To this point. Alright, so I can now proceed to Turn off the construction line layer again. And this is the symbol for third angle projection. You can use these measurements. And if you realize that the symbol is a very large compared to the drawing, you can select everything. Then you go to scale, click on any point. And you can type times 2 to get it twice as big, 0 0.5 to get it half as big. So I wanted it, I wanted it a bit smaller, so I, I scaled it to a half. 
let me do that again to show you select the entire object click on the scale command click on any point on the object then I'm going to type 0 0.5 then I'm going to press enter now it's half the measurement that it was everything here is reduced to half now I'm going to copy I'm going to do another text I want this to be done with my uh, let me just keep it there I'm going to copy this put it here and I'm going to type um, orthographic projection I want this to spread out more so I'm going to pull this across I want to move this I want this text to be even bigger so I'm going to double click on the text I like the text and up at the top I'm going to change the size let me see how 7 looks 7 can work and I'm going to pull this lower I'm going to highlight this and move it upwards and put this back upwards uh, there you have it this is the orthographic projection of the of this same object that was here in isometric projection now we have one more joint to do in this series I'm going to just pull this over more yes all right so we have one more drawing to do so stick around so you can get that drawing done